quiet. Wow, have we time warped you? Or have we time warped you? You just saw me, the last clip you just saw was me drilling the spot welds, the 90 odd spot welds on the floor here. But it's over. We've even vacked up and cleaned up. We've even stripped the other piece of chassis leg off and provisionally welded it in position. I say provisionally, it's permanent really. And we've just offered it up. And what I did with this one, I jacked it into the frame, then I marked the positions, and then I got the plates and tacked it in position here, then dropped it down, then fully seamed it after. Slightly different than that side. <coughs> Excuse me, on that side, I actually exactly measured it. Um, this side. I just decided to try a different way. They're both probably as good as each other, but the net result is we stripped off the uh, the donor chassis off the old pieces of floor pan, drilled all the spot welds out, then stripped a donor section for the fork area, stripped all the spots off that, cleaned back the metal, made some fillet plates, then grafted them all together, saved you the pain, then jacked it up into the car. All right. And this is where we're at. Now we've got a few little checks to do. Now that both chassis legs are on, hold on, I'm going to crawl along the floor for this particular shot for you. The jack is under the dolly and the spirit level shows level. All right, bang on. Just to make sure I'm happy with my floor and the way that it's gone in and the chassis legs and the way that have gone in, I've just stuck a block of wood down on the floor here simply because the tape measure's a cut down version. <clears throat> Incidentally, if you ever break your tape measure, chop off the first metre because they come in dead handy as little mini. Because you tend to only use the, the early part of your tape measure. So I've got this piece and the bolt dimension is 57 right to the centre of the bolt. Can you see that? Okay, down on that block of wood. If we go across the other side by grabbing the block of wood you may as well stay on with me no need for me to cut this piece the block of wood that way jump across the jack and jump in jack down remember we had 57 and what do you know is that only bang on 57 to the mill now that surprised me 57 to the exact mill centre of that bolt. It's exactly the same on the other side. So both forks are now touching the floor, which means that everything's correct. If this side was out, it would push on the dolly unevenly and tilt the car a little bit. You wouldn't get that level. As it, as it turns out, when you jack up the whole car, both bars engage the chassis forks exactly at the same time with the bar being parallel, which means that everything is laid straight. And that's quite good. Um, <clears throat> that check, I only just thought about doing it after I'd fitted this and I thought, I wonder what if that's exactly the same height. So the, car's, the car floor pan's parallel to everything else so the whole thing's square is what we're trying to say here which is I'm really pleased about because I thought there might have been a couple of mil out or something might have changed you know with all this work but it hasn't we've managed to stay level and true throughout the whole build so um, I was really pleased about the way that turned out it's taken me all day from nine o'clock this morning it's now five o'clock just to salvage the chassis piece that you see on the left here and I spared you the pain of drilling it all because we've seen it all on that side. If you wanted to see how we did it, then you just rewind the video and you have a little look at the film of us stripping that piece down. It's exactly the same procedure, bar the way I fitted it to the floor. And here, I didn't quite uh, finish the butt weld. I just left it so there's a little bit of bend in it, then jacked it into the car and let it just slightly open a little bit just to follow the shape of the floor pan rather than set it in stone then put the chassis leg up and you find it's trying to push the floor pan up or you're hammering the floor pan 
down that side I had to hammer the floor pan down a little bit this side I haven't it's profiled to it um, and the floor pan was correct this side that side the floor pan was a little bit distorted so that's the reason why we've got that set up as we have um, it turns out that it's all come together straight so if the car was to be on its wheels both those chassis legs there would be the same distance from the ground each so the floor pan hasn't warped and the chassis legs aren't poking or pointing the wrong way or too far down or whatever it's all correct the um, distance between the chassis legs is correct this one at the right the bar slightly pushes out to the right a bit more than this one does but it's always been that way when I built the jig um, if there was any discrepancy there it's taken up in the bushes on the axle it wouldn't be a problem but it's actually correct because I've measured the center line between the two legs based on the data sheet that I've got so that all only remains for me to continue the repairs that this chassis leg needs its front extender piece so it can meet the chassis and we'll find that down here look on this piece of floor that's its original piece that was cut off because that chassis leg was part of this piece of metal from this car and it was chopped like that so I could extract this humpback bridge thing, this cross member. Here's Bramble's original outrigger leg for under the boot floor. We need to clean and get off that piece of metal there because it slots into here. Indeed, we've got to extract this old metal out of there. Then we've got to clean this up. This needs some local repairs here. It's going to need a plate. Can you see where it's pickled? maybe that's thinning throughout the leg we need to inspect it just see the actual condition of this leg but looking at it looks all right i think we're going to do a combination of braise and mig repairs along it and save the leg i can't feel anything else trying to poke through it's got some losing some of its edge there what I'm going to do is spend a few hours cleaning that up and getting it nice. That would give um, a complete run of chassis all the way down once that's done. Once that leg is on here, we then can fit the humpback bridge cross member. Because at the moment we can't weld it in place because we've got to get access to the plug welds for this piece. So that is it, there's a few brackets to fit on for the handbrake cable on this side, you see the handbrake cable brackets there, they need to go on. And of course we start working up this end, we've spot welded that bit in, we can spot weld this piece in of the chassis. Then once that chassis is done there and welded in like that one is, we stop at that point and we then begin to clean up this wheel tub totally saveable this end of it some corrosion going through but there's enough there to guide us to put the repair panels in some repair panels to do at the front of it the one to the right is quite straightforward it's a bit of angle and then just basically a piece of flat plate that will be hammered with a slight curve and then uh, butt welded in and dressed back the outer piece needs a funny shape like this one can you see a little hump in it another hump there that needs that special shape we need to make that or find one or somehow we've got to do that because we want to include that in it and that then would be some pinholes to fix up this end some little plates to go in there's enough to salvage there it's not rotten where it's going to blow back we'll be able to get that in with the mig and a piece of copper bar if we can fit it behind it if not we could even braze that it's in the right kind of place an area where you can you can puddle the braze in and sand it back so really impressed with today's work I've not filmed a lot of it so you, you've got a bit of a time warp fast forward situation there I just got stuck in and the camera happened to be charging up I just got stuck in and got on with it the next thing I knew the day was blitzed I broke for one hour for dinner the next thing we were done some cleaning up to do under the end of, tail end of the floor pan but not much some Fosclean B and a wire brush, a wire brush first, a Fosclean B and a cloth, gloves on and a mask on for that. We'll clean that metal up. Then underneath's almost finished. We can then 
start thinking about getting the back end of the car on. Once the back end of the car's on, I can then rotate the car on the on the chassis rotator and uh, start cleaning up welds. These welds are pretty flat anyway. And they should grind back quite easily. The floor pan welds are seem nice and continuous. Very pleased with those. Okay, I'm going to wrap for today. It's five o'clock. I will resume on Monday. It's a couple of shows now, and it's a road, Ruby road trip time. Over and out for this part. Okay, next day, next dollar. Getting ready to clean up this fork. It's been blasted. Blasted on the inside as well, best that we can. So we'll uh, we'll rust treat that and clean it up the best that we can. It's salvageable. A little bit pitted in places, but most of the rot we've got by grafting got out by grafting that piece in at the front. And now we're going to do the same and salvage out what's left of the leg. We reckon we can get quite a bit out of this and probably save it. Don't see why not. Some repairs will have to be done to it, but I reckon it's 80% to 90% in one piece. So we just go along and do the usual drill out spots and lift this cap off. Then get the rest of the surplus metal off it, blast it, treat it, clean it. And once this leg's on there and we're getting ready to fit the floor pan, we'll be using these later on. I've already got the other one right behind me, just lying up on the, the wall there. You see it coming in? Already done. Again, some minor repairs to do to them. But all in all, salvageable Bramble original rails. Time to drill. Time to peel off this top lid. We'll just see how bad inside that leg is. Here we go. So spot well drill bit, pilot drill bit, let's do it. Let's go and get these off. Wow, we've been busy. I left you just finishing off the chassis, but a day's gone by. I haven't uh, filmed for a day, so we've got ourselves a day's worth of footage here. This extender piece in to the repair. This is now repaired. And we're ready to reassemble it. So... We've got a cut and shut just up there with these plates, reinforcer plates just at the top, you'll see them down the edge there, and then another one at the front to fit the, the final piece of it on, so that makes the complete chassis run. So we tidied the welds up on the inside of those repair plates, um, there's a couple of holes which I've migged up, and then we've ground and sanded everything back to try and find any more weak spots in that leg but it's all alright. This is already dipped but once a shot blast really and then that repair at the side but that goes with that. This is, is the other piece of the other leg which we're going to graft onto it once we've shot blasted. So those panels need a little bit of uh, TLC just to finish them off a bit of shot blasting. Down we go over here into the mess and I've tied it up three times already and I've had the mask on because there's a lot of dust around. I've been using the 3M mask. Just these great little fly masks there. When you're doing your angle grinding in large amounts at least. And we have been doing large amounts. So you've got this, this dust. And uh, you can end up breathing it in. So once the grinding operation's going, especially when you're using the flat wheels like this. These kick up a lot of dust. I, I think it's better to have the... The mask on and you can see already how it's got dirty where I've been breathing just showing you what's uh, it's stopping going into your lungs you don't want that so we've upped the ante on the safety especially with the recent um, welding scares that are going around about fumes and um, chemicals when you're welding I'm really not into uh, poisoning myself and I don't think any of you are either I'm um, sure you'll tell me your tales about how dangerous you think it all is. So, goggles, breathing masks, so we're on to that. We really don't want to uh, have any dust. And talking of dust as well, again, I've been vacuuming up. Henry's the really good, um, really great tool uh, for vacuuming. Out of all the vacs I've ever used over the years, Henry beats them all, hands down. Just walks all over them, really. It's just a great tool. Henry's another essential item you can't do. What you can't do without, we talked about the croc sander being essential, we talked about the angle grinder. Uh, Henry, as long as you keep replacing them bags, and uh, I think these are HEPA, 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 HEPA dust filtering 
high efficiency bags um, HEPA flow there you go they are HEPA NVM well, that would probably be to do with the particle size I would have thought but um, yeah I think it's great three layers of filtration so I really like the Henry so Henry keeps the dust at bay obviously this is an, an hour for grinding dust so towards the end of this session we shall get Henry out all the tools back away Henry in back up so that each day you start most times anyway you start fresh I mean okay sometimes I'll come in and it's I've been so tired I've not tied it up at the end of the day but it's good to do it I know I keep going on about it but it's, it'll help you if you tie, put everything away it's just if you've got a particular problem that you've not solved and you're coming back to it the next day and it's clean it just gives you a little bit more room in your mind okay on to this then while we're waiting to clean up the chassis legs and actually put them on I've cleaned the area under there with some Foss Clean B then we're going to wire brush it back again with a dust mask on getting ready then to offer the chassis leg up it's already been up and onto the car as you saw but we took it off now to start cleaning the final preparations to get the chassis legs on it's been a long mission I must admit longer than I expected but we are getting there in the meantime I'd like to get this cleaned up now there's no need on this this is the cross member for where the seat goes inside the car there isn't much need to use these today on this because I'm not saving the panel at the back I'll just be wearing these out a tenner a time you get actually double usage because you can spin this flip this over to see where my fingers at the back you flip it Kennedy spot well drill bit don't need to use it work on a wooden board here and um, I'm using an 8 mil cobalt bit and I'm just marking and blasting straight through okay and then what I'm doing if they're not coming off easily then what, I, what you can do is a great little technique remember this one now take take note everybody because this this will save you time if you're doing what I'm doing which is loads of uh, panel harvesting remember my little tip I told you about first of all about slitting metal if you're not saving the metal if it's discarded metal which this is make yourself some cuts because you can start to maneuver and break away and get in with a chisel if you need be into the piece that you're saving so you can make cuts in it so I made a cut all the way down the middle of this which meant that when the spot welded weakened you're able to rock and snap them sometimes even um, with the spot weld drill bit and certainly with this 8 mil bit sometimes I'm not getting the weld completely the weld spread away from the point which you've identified it's actually leaked across a bit of weld and you get non-separation situation going on where you can't even break it so what I do is get this flap wheel and attack the metal from the back I'll show you a piece that we did look over here this was on here like this now it was starting to rock but it wouldn't it wouldn't I couldn't get it started so there's nothing to lose by thinning the metal out on the other side and that really does finish it off so just get the flap wheel you could use the crocky but it's a waste of crocky paper get the flap wheel or indeed a grinding disc better with a flap wheel because it it's, it's gives a better finish it doesn't cut into it like a, a grinding disc would so flat wheel across, weaken it, then you'll find it finishes it off, bump, and it's gone. And it makes it, and it hasn't even got through to the other side. So it speeds the job up, and you're not having to chisel or bend or bring that chisel in like this and coming in trying to, and damaging it. Sometimes the chisel is unavoidable, but this little tip, if you can get access to it, it works. And it just, you throw that away, we don't want that. So using that procedure then we're just going to continue on chewing our way through this piece which incidentally is looking in great order bring it forward a little bit and then work our way out now we find that we're at the top so we're going to rotate around I've marked them in yellow put the piece down as sturdy as you can and you can pile it if you want I'm going to just drill straight through those and then start peeling this piece back 
if it doesn't ping when I've drilled through then I get the flap wheel as I just said and weaken it at the back and they should just come off quite easily then I work my further way down here little exhaust hanger bracket to take off and then we're almost at that end some light damage at that end of the piece but nothing that we can't repair a little bit up this end where it was just a bit ambitiously cut out of the car and it lost its edge so some repairs to do to this probably take a few hours just to get the repairs in and then we're done so you'll cut to me virtually finished breaking this down here we go eight mil cobalt bit going through spot weld removed cross member piece okay so i've drilled through there with the eight mil cobalt and then let's just see if these go we did try and hit them dead on center so because it's cut the metal i can bend that back and start to rock that let me just jam my foot on it for you hold on no tripod today hold on foot on the part sorry about that here we go step back for you so you can see a bit better right, it's a bit tricky trying to jam it and uh, have the camera in one hand but it should go there you go we're off there it looks like this one's worked without having to do that angle grinder trick what you want so that's worked so we hit them that's what we're talking about all the way down probably no need for me to show you any more than that until we get to the end so I'll save you the, the time and the effort I'll see you at the other end of here all nicely peeled back let's see let's see what it looks like but it looks really clean to me I don't think it's going to be any different up that end we need to run the slitting disc down here and break that apart watching this uh, cable bracket we'll take that off I don't want to lose that in fact it's actually not connected this piece of metal here so we'll slice across there saving that bracket here we go I tell you something you've got to have patience to do this wow that was a bit of a mini mission there's all the scrap that's come off it there's our panel in good order it took some persuasion there's some cr crunchy bits on it but not a lot took some persuasion to get off I've been on it probably an hour to get that off a lot of grinding a lot of drilling but it went in the end with no damage but it can test your patience simply because the spot welds some of them the problem was some of them were on right on the edge of the metal can you see right on the edges and they were just holding on and making it a bit tricky but uh, I don't know I just zone out I just go into another dimension when I'm doing it you can hear I've got dust on me throat and even with the mask on it's gone quite dusty in here uh, so I'm gonna call it a day because I think I'm burned out I've done a lot today and there you go, know when to stop. You know, you know you gotta, you can, I could keep going to like midnight. It's that addictive, but it's that exciting to do. I'm gonna offer this up in the car. Oh, wow. What a trip. There you go. You need patience. That's all I can say. Right, I'll offer this up in the car and then we'll call it a day for this clip. Okay, with a quick tidy up and a back up. We can go and see how the cross member fits into the car. Like a glove. Straight in. Tech screw down. Follows the floor pan profile nicely. A little bit of a squeeze up at this end. That's sort of just whack it in. This panel here, just this inner panel, knocked it a little bit just to sort of wedged itself in. But in, in it went. So we've now got the cross member just mocked up because just mocked up because we've still got to weld up that chassis fork there so it just covers a couple of the welds covers about four of the plug welds here obviously the, the plug welds are in but we can't secure the cross member just yet a couple of repairs to do on the cross member we need to get the fork in but we're closing in now looking good and closing in a lot of work a lot of graft to extract that uh, cross member more than you think and quite a bit of work just extracting panels really towards this rear end has been quite a mission and just a little check on the spirit level the panels have been going in straight do you want to come in on that look at that and we know that's right relative to the whole chassis because if you go round measuring the chassis 
right in the middle of the car exactly the same reading look the same as what we did at the front end making sure all the time that everywhere we go with all our data points and everything that we have is just bang on level all the time so it gives you great reference points data points and ways of checking things you know so floor pan in nice floor pan following the cross member showing that the floor pans fitted good and that the good copy pans it wouldn't have done that otherwise there's been gaps there and i've not done that I've just, i mean i had to straighten the lip of it because it's been extracted off spot welds but straighten the lip and it just sits there as it should and does exactly what it's what it should be doing so we'll get that prepared and painted up as well inside that's a cross member piece, seat support, cross member. And obviously, as soon as that's in, you get yourself another square of strength right in the middle of the car there that's formed a nice bracing performance uh, operation performed across the car up this end. So, more rigidity into the shell as soon as we fix that fork and that cross member. And then that takes us right into the corner to do the leg extensions for the boot floor. But we'll do them. Well, actually, I've found that they're a little bit tricky to actually slot into here. I'm tempted to pre-weld up this one. It just means that when I'm walking right here now, I'm going to be tripping into it. So I don't know what to do, whether to attach the legs. Um, well, I can't that side. So it's difficult to work out what to do. Um, because the leg does become easier to weld when it's actually here now rather than in the car you've got to try and slot it under that lip of the boot floor we'll have to see anyway there's some panels i'm going to call it a day for this evening because we've been working hard today a lot of welding sorry a lot of drilling a lot of hacking a lot of grinding been done okay but a good result more good results moving at a good pace Okay, this chassis leg is all finished, painted and repaired, prepped, rust treated and finished off. Now I'm ready to go on the car, so I'm just offering it up. We've cleaned and primed and we have weld through primers under the floor. So really it's just a matter now of offering the chassis leg up and getting on and fixing it in place. But chassis leg itself, repairs look good. Quite seamless job under that, so it's going to present itself quite nice. So a chassis leg for this side to go on. We've also stripped back uh, the wheel tub here, wheel housing, and we can see where we can need to do some local repairs. But for an old car, that's considering these are normally completely gone, it's actually in good order. It's repairable. That's for sure. It's not whole, even hold through. That's just rust that we've got on around the surface there's actually there's a couple of perforations and it's not even thinned out we have got a repair arch just right in the middle of the screen you can see it lying on the floor that's a lip repair piece which we can use if we find anything on the tubs actually thinned out we'll investigate that later we don't even really want to give that any thought at the moment we just want to get this locked in place after we could try and out that cross member inside the car and we're happy with everything the way everything's looking. It's time to get some tacks and weld onto this chassis leg now. So I'm going to jack it up. That bolt there, right in the middle of the screen, we take that out. Insert the bolts into both sides. Jack the groove on the jack and then bring that fork right, right up in, rammed into the pan. Okay, here we go for that now. Jack down, uh, Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels? Jack, da jack D? What the hell? Let's jack the groove. Okay, so just jacking, I can get quite a good height there. Surprised how much the dolly lifts off the ground. So you get quite a good height and that starts to push in. Now you can see the chassis wants to just knock a little bit across to the left, not by much. So this is what we do now. We kind of like start getting some fixings into it and taking the measurements between the two forks to make sure it stays in. It can, it's got the potential to slightly skew, although starting to line up underneath here quite nicely I can see you'll probably be able to see as well the light shines through some of the spot welds 
um, and starts to line up with the original drill holes that we made in Bramble shell. So even though this legs off another car, the template's not an exact guide, but it tells you if you're roughly in the right area. We do that now by measuring, take measure at the ready, and then just make sure the points between the two legs here, from there to the other leg, and from that point to that other point is a square. If it's all square, then we're good to go. So we're looking for a square, square there. Okay, I've got to take measure and then we'll get some tech screws in. Then we can start getting some plug welds in. So pretty much the same as, as when we did that side, really. I'll probably not show you the welding procedure on this. You can see the welds on that side. Now we've lifted it up out of penetrated through so we know we're good. All right, so a little bit of welding and, and tech screwing for me and a bit of measuring. We'll see how we get on in a minute. So jack right into the, the dolly frame, pushing up on that. And we can start to squeeze this together. You'll find this will start to come in now. And we pull taut and get everything locked, locked down in position. Okay, pretty much uh, done it all before. Be glad when this is done. Let's move on. Got that up and uh, chassis legs up and I've got some frame dimensions here. I think we've discussed these frame dimensions in earlier videos. They're really handy and it might be easy for us to have both the, the outer, outer boot floor legs actually in place just to check these frame dimensions because it is part of the frame, it's classed as the frame. So what I'm doing is I'm repairing the last chassis leg by got a good piece off a scrap car remember the brambles original leg this end was damaged so a new end's been grafted in everything shot blasted back some plates were spot welded at the back there then I've infilled with weld I didn't want to just do a butt weld there because it's a stress point so I've put extra plates on it to give it a brace now we talked about dolphin glaze I've got some mixed here it's a very fine fill and we're never going to hide this line so I don't often do the bodywork stuff on the on the films, but Dolphin Glaze is a very fine self-leveling fill, and we can lose that join quite nicely. It's a really fine liquid type filler as opposed to your normal fillers. So we're going to glaze that in nicely now. Uh, I've got to be quick because it does go off quite fast. So let me do that. Okay, with a glaze on, I'm just waiting for it to cure. As I say, if you're doing very fine pinholes, this stuff will self-level into it. It's quite good. And also, if you've got light pitting, you can lose it. Rather than going over with braze, if it's only very light surface pits, you can go with the, uh, the dolphin glaze over that. So you can use it to just blend in any micro repairs. And if people say, your car's full of filler tell them to bugger off all right just tell them to get lost because they've got they don't know what they're talking about um, if you do good quality repairs then skimming them in is part of a good quality repair because you're finishing it okay you want to talk about lead in this I'll see you in about four years all right <laughs> okay so the plates are in there we we'll just wait for that to cure before we sand it back if we wanted to we can go on to the other panels. I've done a little bit there, just of any pinholes. I mean, it's up. This is getting covered in Gravitex, so it's really academic how far you go. But the Gravitex would not have hidden that weld line, even even with my my butt weld back there and then ground back with the crocky. You could still just see line. But we're done with that. I mean, you could. Uh, remove the plates to make it a factory but I think they're giving it a bit more strength on that joint so plates to stay in that chassis leg done this chassis leg was completely and mint so we didn't have to do any repairs to that one just shot blasted it up that's brambles and it came out in one section there's a little bit of edge repair to do there that's about it for that one so that would go in there up the top is what we're doing it's all about building the back end on this section of the film so we 
filming as much as we can and then we're using these sheets over here as I said so multitasking welding grinding filling and, and size checking here now so with this um, frame dimension chart this refers just to the frame of the car so the body set is sat on top of this so it's nothing to do with panel gaps this is to do with the running gear getting the running gear right so it's what you do if your car had been in an accident and it was on a jig they'd use these as your jigging references now they place holes in the chassis legs I'm gonna presume not really for drain holes but I'm gonna presume these are for locating pegs at the factory I think that the holes in some of your chassis legs underneath are locating pegs and indeed this was backed up by someone I met at NEC classic car show who worked on the Ford line and they said that they had these body alignment jigs and uh, things would drop into them including some of the holes in the floor pan okay anyway they're indicated on here and we can do our check that we actually we actually instinctively did before I'd actually seen this if you look up here I was already onto this idea of creating squares and measuring from point to point I was doing a 113 mil from bolt head points on there but the actual better points are indicated on the chart so we're going to go back and use them however they do require you to have these chassis legs fitted which is why I've jumped ahead and got this one prepped up because I'm going to slot both of these chassis legs into place and when I say chassis legs in this instance I'm talking about the ones which uh, weld under the boot floor not the actual axle ones which we've been talking about so these are these are in another section these sometimes are supplied with them on eBay I've seen them new old stock with them fitted and also I've seen them without but it is all a single piece so we're looking at 172 across from the driver's side uh, locating hole the end of the chassis fork across to the locating hole on the uh, here it is so you never wonder what that's for and that's it and it's beveled as well curiously beveled that, that way um, so that a tool can slide in and out without chafing if you just have uh, a non beveled edge and you, you, you put it on a, 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 um, a jig you find that it'll, it'll catch but when it's beveled like this jig tools can slide in and out I think that's what it is someone may say well actually no your bumper broke, bolt goes through I don't think it does I don't think anything goes through this on the car so I will presume because they've used it here that that is the purpose of that hole see there to there so right in the middle of your screen is the, the piece I'm talking about that's assuming it's yeah it is that side no it's not that would be this side there is there so they're doing uh, diagonal lines across and curiously look at this 167 mil across and 172 mil across so two different lines are very curiously um, if you look and here's an anomaly. I mean, this is this is train spotter stuff now. I put the train spot ring the train spotter bell because look at the chassis legs at the end on with regard to the center line. Look, this one spaced further from the center line at a hundred at twelve twenty eight versus what we got there. Sorry, um, five hundred twelve. I'm just a total distance of twelve twenty eight. Um, 500 from the ah there we go 150 mil versus 78.5 mil from the uh, one of the datum lines these this in fact you can see it actually on the diagram look this one is wider than that side so if you were to look at your bumper irons at the back of your car because indeed the bumper iron slots in on that bracket you will find that your bumper irons on a Cortina are not symmetrically from the centre line because this chassis outleg is not in the middle of the centre line. No idea why that is. It could be to get round the petrol tank. It could be to get round the exhaust. It could be something to do with the exhaust hanger bracket. Anything. But what I'm saying is, 
the chassis forks themselves are equidistant to the center line it's just that as that dog leg appears on the passenger side it dog legs out further than it does on the driver's side so 78.5 versus 150 so you've got a difference there if we subtract them that would be a difference so that's interesting so that means that these two diagonal lines we've been measuring will give us two different uh, readings we're looking for 172 and we're looking for 167 and again we've got plus or minus 0.2s coming up all the time so our normal two mil tolerances coming up on the datum and indeed if we needed other angles we have got other sheets as well here almost doing a similar thing this is from the select body jigging tool diagram again we've got those two different center lines now look five seven eight six four eight showing that dog leg being bigger there okay and indeed the um, body alignment jig is using the same holes for its tools to slot into there so everything follows on from everything else if that makes sense whilst I've been saying that this is probably almost cured it's fast curing stuff we can flatten that back with some just light grip paper these can go into paint because they don't want flash rusting because it's nicely shot blasted and clean we paint the insides of them treat them then we'll get them into here and then start checking the uh, measurements as opposed to that sheet because whilst this side was not done with that sheet it was done well it was done with part of that sheet but not with the relative positions of this side if we've got to change anything we've got a chance just to adjust here before we weld up although you may say it's too late because you've welded this side and they both need adjusting but we did use the buggy dolly jig to help us certainly with that space in there we're going to have to go with what we've got we're hoping for two mil I'll accept three mil tolerances on this right leave me to sand this up there's no point in me filming doing a sanding operation I, I do not cover bodywork as I said much because it isn't my expert field I don't really enjoy it that much I let the body shop do most of it it's messy it's dusty I don't like it but there's times when it's got to be done and this is one of them so uh, yeah that's it we're going to carry on with this and get that uh, clipped into the back of the chassis leg then take their measurements I'll see you in a sec okay what we got we've got a bumper what a great idea as well to fit the bumper on this bumper's never been off sorry not been adjusted since it just slid straight off the car so it's going to be spaced for a mark three cortina and you can see the bolt hole just coming into line there with the a, an acceptable amount of tolerance there is a little bit of adjustment on the end of the bumper so we're in the right zone again same on this side a little bit you can just move across that's within the bendiness of it so we wouldn't have to move the chassis fork for that so by using the bumper that helps us again get an idea and now for some measurements I'll show you a little trick which works quite well with the tape measure let me get set up with the tape measure I'm going to show you this little magnet idea oh there it is there's a magnet look a little magnet like this those um, powerful ones connect it to your point where you're going to mount but have it overlapping just halfway so when a tape measure is now going to stick to the end of that but be right in the middle of the circle so I'll grab a tape measure with my other hand and it sticks on and you can actually un unravel your tape measure with no one holding it and it's exactly in the middle so we'd now head down this way to get those diagonal measurements and the magnets that strong it does what we want and we head down to that hole can you join me live a little bit shaky but I'm sure it's worth the trip underneath even though the camera's gonna shake and we go for our reading of if I can just about read it out 
it's going to be I've got to hold it up onto the chassis jig hole and then try and read it with the camera it makes it a little difficult but mark it with my thumb and it is 167 Maybe sorry about that we stayed on we stayed on for a continuous take there as we did one of those diagonal measurements um it was something like one six seven and a half <clears throat> i can i can go back and check it without the camera so this is the one we're doing it's gone parallel in the center of your screen and look at that one six seven seven so we had one six seven five so there's the three mil so I just measured that one across there and that's acceptable because don't forget up again slowly for you you can you can move just a little bit and when the the boot floor lands we'll still be able to just give it a little bit of movement and land exactly where we want on the boot now we need to do the same again on this side and we're looking now for 172 because this is the the offset leg all right with a slightly different curve in it so what we do is again grab the magnet i've now got the magnets and then again onto your datum point not your datum point but your chassis jig point overlap it so the end of the measure would land in the middle of the circle then we go across down that way looking for the 172 do you want to stay on or is it a bit too shaky answers on a postcard if you want to stay with me okay here we go okay here we go it's hard you know to do this and edit it that one doesn't grip as good as this tape measure does what i'll do i'll save you the pain i'll lap, lax that onto the magnet go down to that side and i'll give you the reading see what we get right i'm in looking like one seven one point nine around one seven one with one seven two i'm going to say it's one seven two just going to double check the magnet's still halfway now it's pulled it's pulled a little bit forward we need to push that back it's tricky but it can be done let's push it back magnets moved and okay 171.9 and a 172.2 so again i'll accept that in the greater scheme of things it might be the closest we're going to get you know we're lucky to be even coming in that close anyway with the amount of work that's been going on under here at least we know we're in the ballpark at least we know that you know you're going to be able to fit the bumper and that, okay you might have to just jig a panel just a little bit bash and bend just a touch at least you're not into any drastic work so with that in mind and the chassis leg looking flush against the floor i'm now ready to start putting the welds into that chassis leg and keep indeed keeping it under tension all the time you'll see that i'm jacking right into it with a block of wood to keep it pushed up we can use tech screws as well but a lot of the floor pan is actually resting on the chassis flange edge you know where you weld to uh, so there's no real need to start screwing at it because it's already touching tech screws won't really achieve a lot once you get a couple of tacks on there it isn't going to move we do, do need to go down towards the front where the new floor pan is there are no uh, plug weld holes so we have to do what we did on this side which is a small pilot bit and drill through the existing holes in the flange edge of the donor chassis leg that they'll come up into the floor now at this stage i won't be able to drill now with an eight mil drill bit because i'll drill end up drilling through the chassis leg so i could either drill through them drop the chassis leg a little bit then re-drill um and then jack it back up or i can drill and use the hole hole cutter uh the saw to cut the holes out without encroaching into the flange edge of the chassis piece sounds all a bit complicated and it's all a bit all over the place uh, this last few minutes of footage just because you can see it's a bit of a technical feat to get this I'm sure you'll find it interesting though what we're up to with it take you overhead a bit of a different view if you want 
you can see how that bumper helps us a great deal to set this up rotating you around and then you can just see what we're up against obviously already done all here nice the wheel tub that side saveable we won't talk about it just yet we just want to concentrate our minds on this area don't start getting distracted by the tub itself okay but we want to get this locked in position and welded up do we keep the chassis legs on or do we take them off again after it's a good point um, there's a degree of movement up and down but that's only because they're not clamped firmly there can you move them up and down a little bit to suit the floor pan later possibly a little bit I'm just hoping that this lies in a in a straight parallel plane to the car it should do and that when we land the boot on it we're not having to pull these up or down that way indeed I'll take some measurements across here now of the spirit level and we'll see if these are actually true but I wouldn't expect them to be exactly right because look I can move it already now just the nature of the the metal can flex here look how it can flex see so you may not get a, a bubble level straight but I'll put a, um, a bar across this now here and we'll just see if we're relatively uh, the same as the rest of the car I think everything's level here as it stands on the axle stands on there I think as we're resting on two axle stands there the car is parallel so in theory if everything's clamped up right and we're into uh, our positions okay here and that we did the floor correct then the, the, the bumper and whatever we fit as a bar across here I mean you could use a bumper but it's just hard to rest the spirit level on it I'll try it it's just not as easy as a bar it might go on oh it does go on and there you go I've not even tried to do anything there and look at that I'm not going to complain at that wow it's, in other words it's not like this it's not like that it's look if this was a magnetic um, magnetic one would be all right wouldn't we I'm pretty pleased look at that and that's just I haven't even tried to do that it just shows that if you keep following these uh, rules and measurements and checking you know you're always going to get it see so them outriggers are staying parallel where they are now calling them outriggers uh, let's have a look at the parcel shelf I mean it's a bit late for this now uh, really but nope we're in so a complete parallel level line all the way down including the legs and in spec on those diagonals we talked about going this way and going that way whilst normally they would be the same to create a square they're simply not the same because this dog legs different in fact I can see it now yeah and what I never never spotted that before look at that you thought they were both symmetrical chassis legs are not look there you go and then look on this side a big dog leg in it wow I just never knew that that's a right train spot in one which means that your bumper brackets there and there in theory shouldn't be in the center the one should be offset this one the gap between there and there will be less and indeed it is yep yeah. wow I never knew that you learn something every day wow I'm really, I'm really yeah, made up with that, just learning a piece of new information. Just, I know it sounds crazy, but just the way it is. I think this, one, this one's back, and you can see why, and I bet you've already been guessing it, the filler neck has to come down, so they have to push this. It's not that that one's dog-legged out, it's that this one has to be straight because of the filler cap to dodge the chassis leg, that's what it is. So, otherwise, you sh you you. you petrol tank can't get up and that's what it was for so you learn something and you're learning with me if you're mark 3 uh, owner or fan this kind of info if you if you're like me anyway would find it really interesting just because it's just tech stuff you know tech stuff can be interesting and you know when you go out to your car you're gonna you're gonna if you're ever under there thinking hang on a minute what's going on there you go your bumper brackets 
look at that isn't that great right okay let's carry on i think what i'll do now is i'll start welding it so i'll go i'll show you where i'm going to start in we go into the car up over those all them plugs are ready to get some some welds in now there's no real need to to move anything or everything's primed in there everything's prepped in that chassis leg we know that we can get it if we have to do we need to connect these i don't know are they going to get in the way not sure um that's a good point which i can't really think of the answer to we'll leave this on uh is it going to be harder to weld these i mean really you can still get to the welds there you can we can still weld these up so i could take them away and then put them back in we know we can get it the main thing is that that chassis leg is welded to the floor pan in the correct position okay i'll start welding then get you on the tripod and i'll speed it up a little bit so i've been uh it was a bit of a a bramble ramble we're sorry about the bramble ramble some people say don't worry about rambling pete thanks for those people that don't care about me going on and on and on and on I'll see you in a sec just a few set right back for you because you don't often get to see it this far back so i've just gone into the corner of the workshop for you thought it might be a good idea to give you an overview there's a lot of close-up work isn't there so right back then to see the state of play just to show you that we we do still exist and we're on a selfie stick wow these things are crazy i should i should do more selfie stick stuff god why didn't i think of this before look at that okay you can see the car welcome come on in let's have a look what we've been up to I'm going to use these more, 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 the selfie stick. It's so simple. Why didn't I think of it? Uh, okay, right back down. We can see with all those measurements there, how everything's gone as we wanted it to. There's that bumper, nice and level and straight. Oh, LED work light just in the corner here, getting ready for the, this big push now as we weld on. Okay, um, I've got a block of wood holding that. I'm pushing that up. To the floor so i can remove that in a minute once i get some welds going so join me close up then as we start the weld on the final chassis leg let's go okay i'm going to climb inside the shell and get some tech screws in hopefully they won't wobble around all over the place <clears throat> What we get is with the magnet on the end of the drill it fills full of metal it's magnetic and you can put your screws in the end wow that's totally jammed up the magnetic bit holder full of iron filings Fighter being tested. Whoa. chassis leg nicely tightly up into the into the zone that we want to go the others oh look they're already all in apart from just a few at the top we'll get one in at the top but not much pretty much 
locked and loaded here. That's about it. All them now are all they're all right up there. You can tap a little bit if you want. Not much. It's ready for the welder. Take this cross member out for now. That get in the way of these ones down here. out using the spot weld cutter. I know it's a bit crazy we could have done them um, when the floor was off but I didn't know the exact alignment and then it means taking the chassis off and I've got it all nicely lined up so I don't want to take it off again so I'll just use the whole cutter on those. Here we go, go and grab the whole cutter. Whoops, out the cutter again. Okay get some welds on. Wow, what a day and what a mess it got. This is one of those days that I won't be tidying up. I'm just out of strength and out of time. So where did we get to? You just saw the welder go and we were doing the floor pan. Sorry, floor pan. Fixing the chassis to the floor pan and all them welds are in. 92 welds to drill, another 92 to drill on the donut panel or a bit less. And then 92 to re-plug weld back in. Some blocks there. And load of measurements taken as we're going along, making sure that the parcel shelf stays parallel with the floor pan. We can just wedge and, and move a little bit. A little bit of movement in the wheel tub. I've took a few spot welds out because we need to get into that trap seam. There's some rust trapped in that seam of the tub, so I've loosened the spot welds off on that. Consequently, I had to make sure that nothing went out of line. Cross member can now go in because I've ground off the welds, which are actually hidden underneath the cross member and then some tech screws in the middle. We're going to take some measurements now from the cross member to the parcel shelf and to those seat belt points and just get an average and make sure that it's square in the car. And then the seat then sits on that. So that's the job for tomorrow. We've got a visitor. Someone's crying at the door. He's been fed, but let's go and see what it's all about. Is it going to be smoky? We hear some crying. Come on. Come on. 
Mm-hmm. Yep. There he is. Now then. He's gonna get mucky, lad. He's gonna get mucky, lad. Now you can't go in where the car is because there's iron filings on the floor and that's not allowed. We're getting your paws. Alright? Come on, let's go and get some tea. I'm hungry. Hello. You got a stripe on your back, lad. You got it. What? What are you doing? What are you doing? You got a stripe on your back, lad. That's rather silly, isn't it? Hmm? Come here. Oh, he's a big cat. He's a 20 kilogram monster.